Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Therapeutic Yoga Today. Our class today is going to be focusing on these things right here, the knees. So I thought what I would do is begin with talking about what I think are the top three issues that become problematic with knees. Uh, and then that's what we'll work on today. Uh, so what you will need for today's class is a chair without arms and a yoga strap or something similar to a yoga strap. As well, beyond those two things, uh, your yoga mat or something for the floor. And then today, I'm going to teach you something cool you can do to kind of support your knees in any sort of weight-bearing kneeling position, which we're going to do a little bit of today. So maybe a bath towel. Um, if you don't have a bath towel that you want to place on your floor, then maybe two hand towels. And so once you kind of have all of that stuff, then we will get started. So just kind of have right now um, your yoga strap just sitting in front of you. We're going to use it just momentarily, but we're going to start with a nice, simple breathing exercise to uh, begin our class today. So have yourself so that you're halfway off the chair. So you're not using the back of the chair today. And once you have yourself in that position, just check in that your knees look like they're about hip distance and you can see your feet straight down from your knees. And then once you have that, kind of check in that your knees and like the middle of your foot kind of line up perpendicularly. Now that you have that, just kind of take your hands to your pelvis for me and just gent gently roll your pelvis forward and backward and just kind of work through that excursion of movement of your pelvis and your low back. And then once you've done that a couple of times, kind of find the middle of the road between that tuck and that tilt that you have. You probably are pretty close to where your sit bones are there. And then bring your spine nice and tall. And then at your hips, just take your entire trunk, including your pelvis, and just hinge slightly forward so that you feel enough weight in your legs that you can't pick your legs up. So I'm, you can't see what I'm trying to do, but I'm trying to pick my legs up and I can't quite get them there. Once you have that position today, then just take your hands and bring them out in front of you like you're holding a tray. Just a gentle shrug up with those shoulders, rotate those arms out to warm up and fire up all those rotators of our shoulders and shoulder blades, and then pull those elbows back and down, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then place your hands on your thighs, and then just turn your thigh, your hands downward on your thighs, lengthen your neck and settle your chin. Now today's uh, breathing exercise that we're going to do is really just kind of working on figuring out how to do what is a traditional yoga breathing technique called Ujjaya breath. And so the reason I want to teach you how to do Ujjaya breath is we're actually going to do a little bit of flow, like a, a type of yoga where you're doing every movement with every breath in standing today. So let's just kind of make sure everybody knows how to get that control of the back of your, of your vocal folds. So keeping that nice tall position, no worries if your eyes are open or closed today, but take a nice inhale through your nose. And then as you open your mouth, imagine the mirror and try to steam up that mirror in front of you. So let's try that again. Nice deep inhale in, open the mouth. Can you hear that vibration that's happening at the back of your throat? So now see if you can make that same vibration, but instead of the air coming out of your mouth, see if you can get the air to come out through your nose. So give that a try again. Inhale in through the nose. And then exhaling out through that nose with that sound. Try that two more times. Inhaling into the nose. And then exhaling out. Also known as the ocean breath. You can kind of tell why, right? Inhaling into the nose, and then exhaling out. Beautiful. So that's the breathing technique I want you to try to focus on doing when we move our body up and down from our chair today. So relative to the knees, what are the three things that we really need to focus on to make our knees healthier? It's not often what people think. When people think their knees, 
they think usually about the problems, the pathologies that happen to the knees. But we want to kind of think more on the wellness and the prevention side here. So the way that we can prevent injuries to our knees, nice, strong quadriceps. That's where we're going to begin today. Nice, strong hip stabilizers. Going to work on that as well today. And then good flexibility through the quadriceps and the hip flexors. Going to work on that today. So if we can get those three things working really nicely, you really are at an advantage to keep your knees healthy. So that's our focus for today. Quadricep strength, hip stabilizer strength, and hip and quadricep flexibility. All right. Now, take your strap. And what I want you to do is I want you to take your strap and actually tie your thighs together. So the flow that we're gonna do through our class today, I wanna make sure that those hip stabilizers stay engaged the entire time. So as you find your strap, you can simply take your strap and you know knot it if you wanna do that, or you can use whatever sort of loop you have on your yoga strap or your belt or whatever. But here's the key. You want to tie your knees together or your thighs together at hip distance. So once you have your strap kind of around your thighs, all right, take your hands, take your fists and bring them between those knees and make sure that that is exactly the distance that you have yourself tied together. Now, just simply in this position, push out into that strap. Can you feel that engagement that occurs through your glutes and your hips? Those are the stabilizers I want us to really focus on when we work on our class today. All right, now that you have that, allow yourself to take your feet a little bit further behind so that your knees now line up more with your toe area. Now, for those of you at home that have quadricep weakness, I'm not gonna lie, this first piece is gonna be a little bit difficult because we're gonna be working on sitting to standing from our chair. So really make sure that you're out to the outer half of the chair, you're not too far back into the chair. And once you have yourself in that position, knees and feet are hip distance, knees line up with the front of the toes, just simply take your hands onto your thighs, pull those shoulder blades back and down. Now let's figure out what a hip hinge looks like. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your entire trunk and weight shift that trunk over your legs like you're looking down at your toes. You've got it. Now let's go over how to get up from sitting. It's nice and simple. Push out into the strap. Push down into the feet as you lift yourself up and at the very end, pinch your glutes. Don't let go of the tension onto that strap. Then. It's just exactly opposite to come back down. So slowly hinge at your hips. Let your push come out into that strap as you bring yourself down onto the chair, but your body stays over your legs until you're seated and then bring yourself back up. How did you do? Could you do it without having to use your hands? Let's now take this and see if we can get a little bit of uh, yoga flow happening. All right. So find yourself in that position that we started with. Begin to already engage your hip stabilizers by pushing out into the strap. Take a nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, push into the floor and pinch the glutes and stand upright. Good. Take an inhale here and exhale. Slowly sit back down. The slower, the better. That's where the strength comes from. All right, one more time, and then we're gonna move on to adding some extra movement to this. So hinge your body forward, push out into the strap. Nice deep inhale here. Exhale, push down into the floor, push out into the strap, and pinch the glutes. You've got it. Slowly take an inhale here, and then as you exhale, push out into that strap, and how slow can you exhale and sit back down into that chair and then bring yourself upward. Very nice. Now. See if you can follow along with me with this flow. So remember that Ujjayi breath, that ocean breath that you were doing? See if you can make that happen as we do movements of our body in standing and in sitting. So take a nice deep inhale, hinge forward, exhale, push and push out and pinch. Good, inhale, arms up forward, exhale, 
sit and slowly exhale and slowly exhale and slowly exhale. Beautiful. Inhale, reach your arms up. And this time, fold yourself over your legs as you exhale. And exhale and exhale and exhale. Drop your head down. Look back between your knees. Give your back a little bit of a stretch here. Then walk your hands up onto your thighs and inhale and bring your body back up in line with your pelvis. All right, do you have that in you two more times? Let's give it a try. So inhale, hinge at the hips, push out into the strap. Exhale, make that ocean breath come all the way up, pinch your glutes, good. Inhale, reach the arms forward and exhale, sit it as you exhale beautiful inhale lift your arms up maybe lift your chest up this time and as you exhale fold over those legs drop the head look behind the knees walking the hands up onto the thighs inhale yourself up and then exhaling here all right let's give it a try one last time Inhale, hinge forward at the hips, push out into those straps, ladies and gentlemen. Exhale, push, 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 squeeze the glutes, good. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, sitting, 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 nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow. Inhale, reach your arms nice and high, lift your chest. And then exhale, fold down over your legs, drop your head down, gaze between your knees. Walk your hands onto your thighs, use your arms and inhale yourself all the way back up and then exhale there. How are your hips feeling? You getting some good burning happening as you're starting to fire those hip stabilizers? I hope so. All right, take your strap away from your knees. We're done for it for now. We're done with it for now. We're gonna use it when we get back down onto the floor. So what I would suggest is just kind of take your strap and gently move it beside you. And have it so that we've got it when we're going to be there. Now, gently turn yourself so that you're left facing in your chair. Allow yourself to get your left knee stacked right over the center of your left leg. And then in this position, bring both of your hands and hold onto your left thigh just in front of your knee. Take an inhale and slide the right leg so that the knee is directly underneath the hip. Toes are turned under if you can do that. And then as you exhale, tuck that tailbone under. Now feel that opening through the front of the thigh, the front of the hip. Take a deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, can you tuck it under even a little bit more? One more time, nice deep inhale. And exhale, tuck and tuck and tuck and tuck. Beautiful, slowly release the tuck. Bring your right foot up and then gently turn yourself so that you're now facing the right side of the chair. Check in that the right knee is stacked directly on top of that right arch of your foot. And then in this position, both hands, bring them up and onto that thigh and just put your rib cage in a nice good position relative to your pelvis. Now, take that inhale, slide that leg back, get the knee directly in alignment with the hip, toes are under. Then on the exhale, tuck, tuck, tuck that tailbone under feeling that stretch through the front of the hip and the front of the thigh. Two more times here, nice deep inhale and exhale and tuck, 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 tuck. You've got it guys, let's do that again. Deep inhale here and exhale, tucking, tucking, tucking and tucking. Beautiful, slowly releasing that, bringing yourself back to the center. Allow yourself to see how nicely there is no strap now. How nicely can you stand yourself up without your knees falling in or your knees falling out, but rather keeping that stability through the hips. So check in that your knees are under your toes. You've got it. There's no strap this time, but can you imagine pushing out into that strap? Then inhale your body forward over your knees and then exhale and push and push and push and give that pinch as you squeeze your glutes. You've got it. Now in this position in standing, Take your chair and bring your chair to the left side of you. So if you wanna just turn your body, that's okay. I'm just gonna keep me so that I'm facing you guys so you can see what I'm doing. Now that I have myself with the chair to the side of me, we're gonna work on strengthening a little bit more these stabilizers of this left hip and this right hip. So we're gonna start with the left hip just because the chair is on the left side. 
but look down at your left foot for me and make sure it looks like the outside of your foot is running parallel with the front or the bottom of your mat, depending on how you're standing. You may feel like your leg feels like it's turning inward here. Very good. Hold on to your chair. It's not about balance today. It's about hip stability. So hold on to the chair. Take a nice deep inhale here and on the exhale, give yourself a little bit of a contraction and a bracing through your abdominals. You've got it. Now imagine that there's a stick straight from your head all the way to your pelvis. Slowly allow yourself to tip yourself over that left leg. As you tip yourself over your left leg, can you imagine that your left leg bone is still perfectly perpendicular to the floor? Can you feel that contraction in your left glutes? Now, if you'd like, lengthen a little bit through that right leg. Keep those abdominals nice and engaged. You can bring that right arm up and out to the side if you like. Now, push downward into the floor. As you push downward into the floor with that left leg, you will feel all those muscles firing through that left hip that when they weaken, we start to have problems with our knees. Hold yourself right here. Take a deep inhale. Can you make that Ujjayi breath? And exhaling, push down into the floor, keep your stomach engaged. One more time, nice deep inhale. And exhale. Slowly drop the right foot down and relax yourself in standing pose. Okay, now, before we switch to do the opposite side, Let's open one of these hip flexors that are often problematic in a standing position today. So here's what I want you to do. Keep your left foot exactly where it is. Take your right foot and bring it up and over your left foot so that if you look at your feet, the inside or the outside, so your pinky side of your feet are kind of lining up one to the other. Make sure you have your pelvis pointing forward. So a lot of us, our pelvis is going to rotate to the left when we did that. So have it so that your pelvis is pointed perfectly forward. Now in that position, take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, use those abdominals as hard as you can, your glutes, your hamstring, tuck the tailbone under so that you can start to feel a stretch in the outside of that hip. If you've got sufficient balance and you want to give it a try, you can inhale the left arm up and exhale and give that pelvis a little bit of a shear to the left. Only if you feel like your balance is comfortable enough. If you let the pelvis shear and you lose the tuck, don't worry about the shear. Keep your hand down and just work on the tuck. Hold yourself right here. Nice deep inhale into the belly. Ujjayi breath. Can I hear that ocean breath today? And then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Beautiful, uncrossing the legs, taking your chair and either moving it to the opposite side of your yoga mat or just turning yourself around, doing nothing new, just what we've already just done. So find yourself so that your right foot now is on the mat and it's lining up. The outside of your foot lines up with the top or the bottom of the chair. The chair is strictly for balance today, so you can really, really appreciate those hip stabilizers. Now that you have yourself in that position, nice deep inhale here, and on the exhale, just engage, just engage and harden your abdominals, maybe a slight tilt so that you can feel a little bit of tension through the front of your leg. Then allow yourself to start to lift that left leg up. Now, here's what you need to make sure. The right leg that's on the floor stays perp perfectly perpendicular. That's hard to say, perfectly perpendicular. So you don't want it to shear out. You don't want it to come in because you're trying to really work on stabilizing those muscles of the hip that really control the leg bone. All right, now you have yourself in a modified type of star pose. Start to really push down into that right foot into the floor. You'll feel the glute muscles and the stabilizers firing. And then if you want to, to kind of get yourself into even a better star pose, just take that left arm up and out to the side. Really, really allow yourself to push down into that right foot. Take that deep Ujjayi breath. Can I hear you go? 
and then exhaling. One more time, nice deep inhale. And then exhaling. Slowly as you normally inhale, bring yourself back up. Now let's get those hip flexors on this side. So your left foot, take your left foot up and over the front of your right foot. As you do that, you're trying to line up the outsides of the feet together. So that's what's on the inside. That's a little confusing. And then if your pelvis is rotated to the right, turn the pelvis back to the center. Once you have yourself in that position, take an inhale and on the exhale, tuck that tailbone under. Now, that might be enough that you feel that stretching in the outside of the right hip. If it is, stay right there. If not, you can add a little tiny bit of a shear of that pelvis to the right. And then if you've got it in your balance, you can also kind of add a little bit of your latissimus here. So just inhale your arm up and kind of go a little bit towards the left with your trunk. Pick what is comfortable for you, but the key is you've got to keep that tuck of that tailbone to get that muscle. So whichever works for you, that's where I want you to be today. Pick your pose. Let's do those two breaths. Deep inhale into the nose, ocean breath for me. And then exhaling out. One more breath. Nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Now, here's where we're going to next. One more quad strengthening exercise before we take it down to the floor. So take your chair and place your chair somewhere on your yoga mat so that you're gonna have it for support. And then what I want you to do is I want you to grab your towel and you're gonna double or triple that bath towel. So all you're making is a nice good cushion for your knees on the floor right now. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that once we get to the floor. Now, in this position, what I want you to do is place the towel somewhere to the center of your mat and you're gonna straddle the towel. So here's what we're working on. We're working on really learning how to do a safe, healthy, efficient lunge to the floor which all of us, no matter if we're 20 or 90, should be able to do. And we're gonna just give ourselves a little bit of a soft landing in case you don't have sufficient quadricep strength to make it there. So have yourself so the chair is in front of you. Have yourself so that, let's take the right leg back first and the left leg forward first, and then kind of eye yourself. Where would you have to put that towel so that your knee is going to land on that towel? Now, check in with your left foot. What I want you to do is have your left foot forward, but the outside of the foot lines up with the side of the mat. Can you look back at your right foot? Do the same thing. Does the outside of the foot line up with the outside of the mat? In this position, hold on to your chair. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, slowly bend each knee as you drop the right knee towards the floor. Keep the toes turned under. Are you ready? Nice deep inhale, left leg. Push and bring yourself back up into a standing position. Two more times before we switch. Deep inhale here. Exhale slowly, 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 slowly drop that right knee to the floor. The slower the better, that's where you get your strength. All right, left leg has to do all the work here. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, push through that left leg like you're trying to lift yourself up off the floor. Well, actually you are lifting yourself up off the floor. Last time here, nice deep inhale. Exhale, slowly dropping that right knee down to the floor. Deep inhale here. Exhale, push yourself back up. That's it, beautiful. And then just slowly switch your feet. So the right foot comes forward now. Take the towel and kind of move it a little bit to the left. Have your legs in that straddle stance. They're about hip distance or so. And then check in with the right foot first. So is the outside of the foot in line with the outside of the mat? Left leg behind you. Can you turn that heel out so the outside of your foot lines up with the outside of your mat? And just kind of eyeball it. Are you going to be at 90 and at 90 with where you have your towel placed on the floor right now? 
Let's give it a try three times, just like we did on the opposite side. So nice deep inhale here. Exhale, really focus on bending that left knee as you slowly lower to the floor. Deep inhale, right leg now. Exhale, push into that right foot as you bring yourself back up. Two more times. Nice deep inhale here. Exhale, all the focus is on controlling and bending the left knee to the floor. The right glute, it's gonna get you there where you need, but it's the left quadricep we wanna strengthen. Now the right one, take a deep inhale here. Exhale, push through that right foot and bring yourself back up. Last time, deep inhale. Exhale, slowly bend that left knee and drop yourself down to the floor. And inhale, exhale, push into that right foot and find yourself back into a standing position again. Very good. Now here's what I would like you to do. We're done with our chair. And so what I'd like you to do is go ahead and take your chair and just gently place it to the side of your yoga mat or just kind of move it away. And then make your way down onto your yoga mat into child's pose. And then we will meet right back up and keep doing what we're doing. So from your child's pose, what I want you to do is slowly come up for a second and grab your towel. I wanna teach you something really important about any sort of knee weight bearing exercises that you do on the floor. So a lot of us, we may have had some sort of knee surgery or something like that in the past. And so the focus of what you're gonna use your towel for is to learn how to decompress your kneecaps. And so you have this little tiny thing underneath your kneecaps. So it's about right here called a fat pad. So they puncture through that fat pad when you have any sort of arthroscopic knee surgery. And if you have any sort of surgery that's bigger than that, they do more than poke through it. So what I'd like you to do at home with me is take your bath towel and just gently roll your bath towel up so that it's kind of like in a long tube. And once you have your bath towel in a long tube, then start to kind of turn it in on itself like it's a, I kind of think of it like a, like a fern, <laughs> but you're basically making two little donuts. So there's holes in between both of those little turns. Now that you have those holes in between both of those turns, for most of us with a bath towel, that's about hip distance. And then what I want you to do is to simply take your knees and place your knees in those holes and stack your hips on top of your knees. And boy, oh boy, does that feel good if you've had difficulty kneeling, trying to attempt to do yoga class for a long time. And so today with our hands and knees poses, we're gonna work on keeping that towel there and just see for yourself, do your knees feel better later on today? So your knees are now hip distance, but can you look behind you and make sure that your feet are straight behind your knees and that your hips do stack straight on top of those knees. Walk your hands forward so that your, your hands and your elbows are directly underneath your shoulders. Index fingers are forward and your hands are shoulder width distance. Now that you have that, can you spread those thumbs in so you get a nice good stretch through those thumb muscles and spread out those outer three fingers, but check in that there's not a lot of weight in those outer three fingers, okay? Now let's go through three cat cows, but here's what I want you to do today. Can you make that ocean breath sound that you practiced at the beginning of the class? Let's give it a try. Nice deep inhale, sink the belly, lift the tailbone, shoulder blades back and down, lengthen that neck and look all the way upward. And then as you exhale, pull the belly up and in, arch the back, tuck the tailbone, chin to chest, look all the way into that belly button. Let's do that two more times. Inhaling, sinking everything down, lifting the tailbone, shoulder blades back and down, lengthening the neck and looking up. And then exhaling, pushing everything up, arching that back, spread those shoulder blades, tuck that chin, tuck that tailbone, and gaze to that belly button. Let's do it again. Can you make the sound the whole time? And exhaling. end of your exhale, slowly sit yourself back onto your heels. 
as you're making your way onto your heels, you may say to yourself, well, gee, normally I can touch my heels, but with this towel there, it's a little bit more difficult. That's right, because you're dropping your feet a little bit lower than you normally do. It's a beautiful stretch through the front of your ankles. So just kind of sit back, find where it's comfortable for you. If you're feeling stressed to the to tops of your ankles right now, you are tight there. You can put a towel or a pillow or something if you need to. Take a nice deep inhale, lift your rib cage forward, tuck your tailbone under, slowly drop the crown of your head nice and close to that towel. Now rest yourself in child's pose here. Yep, rest down with that forehead. If you can't make it there, you can take your hands and rest your hands and you can even hold your head upwards, but make sure that your neck is long and your chin is tucked. And let's do two nice deep inhales and exhales into our belly here. So nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. Beautiful. Now slowly coming up. Keep the right donut or the right turn on the knee where it is, but take your left leg up and out. Now we don't have a bolster that we're using in class today. So if you need something for balance, that chair that's near you, go ahead and grab it. But today take your left foot to the edge of your left mat. Keep your right knee where it is so that you're wider than hip distance. Stack that hip perfectly on top of that knee. Check back that your foot is straight in line with your knee. Keep your left hand on your left thigh. And here's what I want you to do. If you feel like, oh, my balance is a little shabby, start to push your hand into your thigh and you're gonna engage through your abdominals and through your, your spine muscles to kind of help yourself hold that balanced position. Now take all of your focus to your right pelvis and your right hip here. Nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, really tuck that hip under but don't let your rib cage come behind you. So really see if you can find those hip flexors that oftentimes are really problematic for these knees. So holding that position right there. Take a nice deep inhale, maybe that Ujjayi breath that you've been doing for class. And then as you exhale and you tuck a little bit more. One more breath here, deep inhale and exhale. Now, here's what I want you to try. Keep the tailbone tuck and can you lean a little bit forward and get a little bit more of a stretch? Holding right there, nice deep inhale and exhaling. One more breath, ladies and gentlemen, deep inhaling and exhaling. Beautiful, bring your right hand down to the floor, left hand comes down, take that left knee back, Find that alignment into your tabletop. Nice deep inhale, sink the belly, lift the tailbone, shoulder blades back, look up. Exhale, pulling everything under, really tuck the chin towards the chest, tailbone tuck under. Did your feet lose their position? Check it out. Inhale, sink everything down, lengthen the neck, look up, tailbone lifts. Exhale, curl everything under, really tuck that tailbone, tuck that chin, spread those shoulder blades and slowly sit back into child's pose. Now, as you're making your way back, take that inhale and lift that rib cage a little forward today. Slowly start to drop the crown of the head to the floor. It has a little further to go than normal. So again, you might need to support your head. Two nice deep inhales and exhales into our belly. So deep inhale in and exhaling out one more time nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out and slowly bringing yourself up making sure that your little semicircle or your donut for your left knee is secured and then bring your right foot up so that it's in line with your knee and lines up with the outside of your mat Again, if you need your chair for balance, feel free to do that. But check in that wherever the right leg is, the left hip and the left knee stack one on top of the other. Look back at your left leg, make sure the foot lines up with the knee. And take the right hand and place the right hand onto the right thigh and kind of engage. So get that connection between the upper half, upper half and the lower half really helps your balance in half kneeling here. 
Now it's all about the hip flexors on the left side. So think about the pelvis and the left hip. Take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, really tuck that tailbone under and get that opening through those left hip muscles. Holding right here. Nice deep inhale. Keep engaging through the right hand and exhaling. Can you make that ocean breath that we're practicing today? Nice deep inhale and exhaling. Beautiful. Now try this for me. Keep that tailbone tuck and can you lean just a little bit further just to get a little bit more stretch to the front of that eye? Nice deep inhaling here. Keep the tuck. Keep pushing into the leg for balance and exhaling. One more breath. Inhaling in and exhaling. Beautiful. Slowly dropping the left hand to the floor, bringing that right knee back, slowly allowing yourself to kind of settle yourself back to child's pose. Gently take your towel, you're done with it. So just gently take your towel and kind of move it off to the side. Have your knees hip distance back into your heels. And wow, this child's pose is going to feel so easy compared to what you've just been doing for the last two. And then maybe for this one, gently lengthen your arms in front of you to get a nice good stretch through your shoulders. And since that's not our focus today, and see if you can hold this position here and let's go through a couple really nice deep inhales and exhales. So nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Slowly allowing yourself to grab your yoga strap. Now, I want to show you something real quick about your yoga strap before we get our, down onto our belly. So we're going to use our yoga strap as a lasso to kind of grab a hold of our foot to really, really strategically target these quadricep muscles and open up our legs and our thighs so that our knees are happy. So what I want you to do is to take your yoga strap and kind of make a loop with it. Now, if you don't have a yoga strap and you're using something that just ties, just make a knot in it so that you've got something that is about what you think would be the loop that would fit around your foot. Finally, if you're somebody that has a sensitive low back, what I oftentimes encourage people to do is to take a pillow and place the pillow underneath your belly area and your chest area when you do any exercises on your belly so that you don't irritate or exacerbate any problem in your low back simply trying to help your knees. So that is an option for you at home if that's something that you need. Okay, now allow yourself to bring yourself down onto your left side. Now that you're down onto your left side, take your little lasso hoop that you've got, find your right foot, and strap that right foot in place. Now that you have that right foot strapped in place, slowly allow yourself to come over onto your belly. Again, that pillow is there if you need it. Once you have yourself on your belly and the lasso is around that right foot, can you just check in that that lasso is around the outside of the right foot? Because we're gonna be pulling our foot up towards our chest and I don't want it to irritate the arch of your, of your uh, foot. Now, in this position, allow yourself to squeeze your knees nice and tight together. And then with both hands, if you need to, slowly pull the bottom of the uh, bottom and your heel towards one another. You should be able to, in efficient quadricep length, get your heel to your buttock, but you may have a knee replacement or scars or restrictions or arthritis that only get you to a certain position. Wherever you are with pulling your heel to your bum or your buttock, make sure that there's no tension in your knee. If you've got dysfunction in your knee joint, that's something that likely will need to be treated. We're not trying to irritate a knee joint or a kneecap. We're trying to gain flexibility of your quadricep. So only place your leg where you feel no pain or tension into your knee. Once you have that position of your leg that you're happy with, check in that you're still squeezing your knees together, and then just rest your head down on the opposite arm. 
Now, take a deep inhale here, and then on the exhale, tuck the tailbone under, tighten the abdominals as tight as you can. Can you feel that stretch that's occurring in the front of your thigh? Take that deep inhale and that exhale. Tuck a bit more, squeeze a bit more, whichever you like. Let's do that one more breath. Nice deep inhale and exhale. Then slowly release the foot all the way down to the floor, let go of the strap. Take your hands, place your hands underneath your, underneath your shoulders. Take that head and bring that head down. Elbows, tuck them in. Nice deep inhale here and then on the exhale, push yourself up, find your way all the way to child's pose. Now rest yourself in child's pose for me, please. Allow yourself to settle your heels. Check in that your feet and your knees are not misaligned, so they're still lined up with one another. And gently relax the crown of the head to the floor and take a nice deep inhale into your belly and then exhaling out. Now, let's do that. Another nice deep inhale, another nice deep exhale. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. Slowly come on up, turn yourself on your yoga mat, grab the little loop-de-loop -loop that you've got around your right foot and lay down on your left side. So once you're laying down on your left side, Take your little loop of your yoga strap, reach for your left arch of your foot. Once you have it safely, then slowly allow yourself to come over onto your belly. Once you're over onto your belly, you can kind of get that strap so it's up and over that left shoulder. And then right leg is straight, begin to squeeze the knees together. Let's do it all over on the opposite side. So with those knees squeezed together, and slowly pull the heel as close to the buttock as you can get it. Again, you are very conscious here of any sort of pain that might be occurring in the knee joint itself or in the kneecap. Whatever position you pick, it should be a pain-free position before we add the, more, the most important component to the stretch, which is the pelvic tilt. So find where you're comfortable and then hold yourself there. I like to gently bring my head down so it's resting onto my opposite arm. Now here's the good part. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, find those abdominals and really tuck that tailbone under and feel that stretch through that left thigh. Holding it right here, take that deep inhale. Can you make that ocean breath? Keep that tailbone on the exhale. Can you tuck under a little bit more as you hear that breath? One more time, deep inhale, exhaling, tucking as you open up through that left thigh and then slowly relaxing the squeeze, the tuck, the knee. Once you've done that, slowly letting the leg drop to the floor, walking the hands underneath those shoulders one more time, dropping the head, elbows, tuck them on in. See how strong you can be here with those arms. Take a nice deep inhale and then on the exhale, push yourself back into that child's pose one last time. In your child's pose this time, just simply take your yoga strap and move it away. We are going to shun it for the rest of class. We're done with it. But check in that your knees are hip distance. Look back at your feet. Make sure they're not touching. Settle your bum towards your heels. Let your belly come down, rest your head down, relax the arms this time. Nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. One more breath, deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Beautiful, slowly bringing yourself back up onto your side just long enough to slowly turn yourself onto your side and then roll yourself onto your back. Now, what have we accomplished thus far? We've strengthened our quadriceps, we've worked through our hip stabilizers, we've stretched our hip flexors and our quadriceps. So we have done a pretty good job, but we're gonna do just a little, little tiny bit more through our hip stabilizers by working on our hip stabilizers and our glutes all together in synchrony. So we're gonna work on a bridge here. But I want it to be a bridge 
that's good to strengthen your big glute muscles and not a bridge that's hurting your kneecaps or that's hurting your low back. So check in right now that your feet are somewhere directly underneath your knees. And if you've got tight knees or sort of restrictions and you're a little further out, that's okay. But just bring yourself to the position that you feel comfortable and make sure that both feet are in the same position horizontally. They're about hip distance apart. Roll your shoulder blades back and under you. Take your hands today and place your hands onto your lower abdomen area. Now here's what I want you to do. I want you to brace and harden your lower abdominal. And so if you're not familiar with how to brace and harden your lower abdominal, just simply take one hand and one thigh up together, push the hand into the thigh, the thigh into the hand, you will figure out how to tighten those muscles and then bring that leg back down. But keep those abdominal muscles nice and engaged, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Now, start to gently push your feet into the floor. As you push your feet into the floor, what you should feel is that your pelvic, uh, your pelvis wants to move, but don't let it. So push your feet into the floor, but really tighten those abdominal muscles and keep that pelvis and that back stable. Now take a gentle inhale and just try to push your knees away from you over your toes. So it should be a very small bridge, maybe an inch, maybe two inches. If you're lucky and have long legs, which I don't, it might even be three inches. But hold yourself in that bridge position. Keep your abdominal muscles engaged. Can you look down and see if your knees are going straight and not going out. If they're going out, work on those outer tight hip flexors and pull the knees back inward. Now, tighten the abdominals, harden them, squeeze your glutes, push down into the floor. Can you give me two of those Ujjayi breaths? Nice deep inhale in and exhaling out here that ocean breath. One more time, nice deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Slowly lower your hips down, relax the abdominals, take your right knee, bring your knee to your chest, hug around your shin bone, lengthen your left leg down onto the mat. Oh, hold this position for a moment. Take a deep inhale here and then on the exhale, pull your right knee into your chest, lengthen your left leg away and gently push the left leg down into the floor. Have your shoulder blades back and underneath you. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin right here. Now, scrap the Ujjayi breath, ladies and gentlemen. We're done with it. We're done with strengthening. We're done with intention of hearing our breath. Now let's go to a purely diaphragmatic breathing technique here. So feel your belly touching your thigh. Take a nice, deep, slow inhale into your belly and feel your belly pushing to your thigh. And then as you exhale, just slowly, gently pull your knee to your chest. One more time, inhaling. Pushing the belly up and into that thigh as your diaphragm does all the work. And then slowly exhaling, relaxing as that knee comes to your chest. Very nice. Now for those of you that might have some issues with your hamstrings and you did that bridge and the only thing that happened to you is that your hamstring cramped, well this one's for you. So take your hands now and bring them behind your right thigh and keep that right knee nice and close to your chest. Maybe even pull those shoulder blades back and down and pull the elbows down towards the floor. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Take your toes now and point your toes up towards the ceiling. Take a nice inhale and slowly start to straighten that right knee, opening up through the hamstrings and also that sciatic nerve. And then as you exhale, let it go down. So let's do that four more times. Inhaling, straightening. Can you gaze at that toe? Keep the knee to your chest. And then exhaling, letting it go down. Keep the toes pointed the entire time. Shoulder blades are back and down. Inhaling, straightening the knee. Exhaling, relaxing it. And two more times. Inhaling, straightening. 
and exhaling and relaxing. And one final time, inhaling, straightening that knee and exhaling and relaxing it. Beautiful. Slide the left leg up, release the right foot to the floor, and then gently take the left knee to the chest, hug around the shin bone. Once you have that, slowly slide the right leg down the mat. And take a nice deep inhale here, and then as you exhale, pull that left knee nice and close into your chest, shoulder blades are down, pull those elbows down towards the floor, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Now, deep abdominal diaphragmatic breath here. So nice, deep inhale all the way into that left thigh. And then as you exhale, just gently allow the left knee to come to the chest. Can you slowly and gently engage the right leg into the mat? Let's do that again. Nice, deep inhale into the belly, into the left thigh. And then as you exhaling, slowly pulling the knee into the chest, pushing that right leg down. Beautiful, letting that go. Taking the hands now to the underside of this right knee, keeping the knee nice and hugged to the chest, right leg is long and engaged. Elbows are pulling down towards the floor, shoulder blades are back and down. Neck is long, chin is gently tucked. Take those feet now and point them up. All right, let's give this a try for five solid breaths here. So inhaling, straightening the knee. Do you know that you're tightening and strengthening your quadricep? You are. And then exhaling and letting it go. Four more times, ladies and gentlemen. Inhaling, straightening. You might even feel the shake. Exhaling, relaxing. Toes stay up. Inhaling, straightening. Deep belly breath, exhaling and relaxing. Keep the knee to the chest two more times. Inhaling and straightening. And exhaling and relaxing. And finally, nice deep inhaling, straightening that knee. And exhaling and relaxing. Beautiful. Slide the right leg up. Release the left foot to the floor. Now, just a little bit of opening through all of those hip muscles that we worked on stabilizing and strengthening today. So we're just gonna do something nice and simple. Windshield wipers here. So take your feet, walk your feet out to the edge of the mat, line up the outside of the feet with the outside of the mat. And once you have that position, just gently bring your arms out to the side of your body today. Take a nice deep inhale, and then on your exhale, just gently let your knees fall to the right side. Good. Now, keep yourself in this position. Shoulder blades are both back and down, so it's not a spinal twist all the way up the spine. But let's really focus on that left leg now. So in this position, take a nice deep inhale, and on the exhale, imagine letting the knee go away from you and towards your mat. You will feel that opening. Again, deep inhaling here and exhaling. Now with the right leg, just check in that you're not squeezing and tensing through your glutes. Keep this position, take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Nice. Now, start the inhale and bring the knees back up to the center and check in that the feet are the width of the mat lined up again. And then on the exhale, drop the knees to the opposite side. Shoulder blades are still in contact with the mat. That's not a full spinal twist, but take that focus to that right knee now. And with that right knee, take a nice deep inhale. And then on the exhale, lengthen that leg away from you. Pull the leg away first, and then just gently let that knee try to fall towards the floor. Left leg is rotated out to the side. Speak to your glutes. Let the muscles go. So if you feel your left glutes tightening, try to relax. It's hard. It takes a lot of intention. See if you could just let go of your left glutes. Now deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Inhaling, bringing the knees all the way back up to the center, walking the feet to the center of the mat as you exhale. And then just bring your knees up to your chest here. Give yourself a little rock and roll before we do our full spinal twist. 
kind of opening up a little bit more. Take a deep inhale and exhale, pull the knees into the chest. That's it. And then slowly let your knees come down, our feet come down to the floor. Take the left leg, slide the leg fully down the mat, right foot up and into that left thigh, left hand, reach up and over for that right knee, right hand, bring it out to the side of your body here. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, slowly start to pull the knee across to the left. Keep rotating until you feel you have achieved and reached that right shoulder blade, but keep that right shoulder blade onto the mat, lengthen through the right arm, lengthen through the neck and the chin, and then rotate the head, gazing at that right thumb. Make sure your neck is long, your chin is tucked. Take a nice deep inhale into the belly here. And exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into that belly. And exhaling out. And then slowly bringing your head back to the center, starting at that right rib cage and de-rotating all the way down to the pelvis, unrotating the knee, dropping the right foot to the floor, sliding the left leg up, right leg comes down the mat, left foot comes up and over that right thigh, right hand, grab that left knee, left hand out to the side of your body, take that nice deep inhale here, exhale, start to pull that knee all the way across, find yourself rotating that spine right to the left shoulder blade. Once you feel you've achieved that left shoulder blade, lengthen that left arm a bit, lengthen that neck, settle that chin, and then turn that gaze towards that left hand. Now make sure that neck is long and that chin is tucked inward. Nice deep inhale into your belly here. And exhaling out. And again for me, please. Nice deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. And then turning your head back to the center, starting at that left shoulder blade and de-rotating that spinal twist until finally the knee unrotates. Place the left foot on the floor, slide the right leg up, bring the knee all the way back to the chest, ditto with the left, have them both up there one last time, one more last rock and roll. Allow yourself just to really feel the beauty of opening up through that low back. And then settle in the center, take a nice deep inhale. Exhale, pulling the knees into the chest, shoulder blades down, lengthen the neck, settle the chin. Beautiful, deep inhale into the belly here. And then exhaling out. And then slowly relaxing the feet to the floor, allowing yourself to make sure that your lumbar spine and your pelvis are in a nice, good, neutral position. Rib cage is relaxed. And then in that position, start sliding one heel down to one corner of the mat, followed by the other heel down to the other corner of the mat. Feel yourself in your nice little comfy position through your lower half. Roll your shoulder blades underneath you. Bring your arms gently out to the side. Elbows are straight. Palms are lifted. Lengthen your neck. Settle your chin. Rest your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Let your mouth just relax there. Gently close your eyes. And in your Savasana today, I kind of want you to kind of press the reverse button. I want you to go back to what was the hardest in class for you. So let me review what worked on strengthening your quadriceps. Sitting to standing and that flow of sit to stand we did at the beginning of class. Working on those active lunging down to the floor. We're all really working on targeting, strengthening through our quadriceps. As well as when we opened up through our hamstrings, we use those quadricep muscles with a good contraction. So was any of that difficult for you? If so, you may have weak quadriceps and that might be something you need to focus on. Number two that I said is an often cause of lack of health in our knees is related to weakness in our hip stabilizers. So when we were standing and we did that modified star pose, really push down through each of those legs, 
And did you have difficulty doing that or even difficulty with your balance? Or when you were in bridge pose, could you have yourself really squeeze through those glutes or did you have difficulty not allowing yourself to do that? Meaning, did your hamstrings cramp or did you lose that pelvic position? If so, hip stabilizers are where it is for you. So those are the types of things you wanna focus on to gain health in your knees. Finally, let's talk about the flexibility of the quadriceps of the hip flexors. So in sitting, we worked on a modified crescent pose, bringing our legs back to open up through our hip flexors. And then in kneeling, we repeated that all over again, but in a weight bearing position. And then we got down onto our belly and stretched through our quadriceps and really focused on that pelvis to target what's called our rectus femoris or a muscle that attaches to our hips and our knees. Was that a challenge for you on both knees or one knee? And if so, that might be where you need to strategically take your focus on gaining more health in your knees. Now, some of you might be saying, well, I had problems with all three. Then you focus on all three and continue to work every day on the health and wellness of your knees. And then slowly allow yourself to start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and then do some circles with your ankles and your wrists. And when you feel like you're ready, just let one leg slide up followed by the other leg and gently roll over onto your side for me. Rest yourself right there for a moment. And take a nice deep inhale and an exhale there, maybe even a smile. I committed an entire hour to myself today. It's so awesome. And then when you're ready on your next exhale, top hand, bottom elbow, push yourself up into a seated position. And facing me, finding that what's called easy pose or crisscross applesauce, tail or sitting, whichever one works for you. Hands are to our hearts and smiles are on our faces. Nice deep inhaling in and out. Namaste. The highest in me salutes the highest in you. Why, thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.